incredibly excited to share this painting method with you guys. It's something that I've been learning um, over the summer, and I took a mini workshop from an art group that I belong to, and I was so excited over learning it. It is completely different than anything that I've done other than watercolor pouring. And by that I mean you do it in the same way. Um, however, you're painting on rice paper, which is a very thin, transparent uh, Japanese paper that has fibers in it. So you paint on this and you have to um, control your water more. You're not going to use as much water. And um, the more water you use, the more that it spreads. So it goes on very easily. You still paint uh, from um, lightest to darkest. You still do it in layers. And for my demo for this one, I'm going to be doing this uh, sunflower painting or one similar to this. I've changed it up a little bit. I'm actually doing this for my cousin that lives in Nebraska. Hi Connie, if you watch this, I truly am painting this for you. Anyway, I've been promising her a painting for the last few years, but we've been incredibly busy going from Tennessee back to Utah, back to Tennessee for six months and Utah for six months. So life has been crazy and I just couldn't get my act together. So I'm in Utah right now, won't be going back for a few months yet. So I decided this was my goal, to start out 2024 by doing this YouTube tutorial for you guys. Give you a little bit more information, and that is when you do this, you're going to be transferring your photo and we don't do work from a photo on this. You can do your setup if it's a still life. You can take your own pictures. You can take your own photos and everything. Then we're going to transfer the photo onto the chinwashi paper. Actually, this one is kinwashi. It's a little bit different, but I have used um, this one and I have used uh, chinwashi as well. And you can get that all on um, Amazon. You just have to type in rice paper for watercolor painting and you'll get a, a plethora of a, amount of uh, paper on this. Sorry I'm stumbling all over. I'm just so excited here. Anyway, um, we trace this using a uh, permanent ink, like a um, micro pen, black ink, and we're going to trace everything on here. And what I did is first I traced um, a, let's see, it's a 12 by 16, I believe, onto just regular tracing paper. On that tracing paper, I am going to um, do that in the micro pen outline as well. But I'm also going to put in all of my darkest areas, my very darkest areas with a black felt tip pen and uh, using gray um, of various colors of gray, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> various colors of gray on this so that it will be my map after I've transferred the photo onto the rice paper. Then I can look at that drawing and get my areas where I'm going to have my, my darkest to my lightest. So when we do this, we're using wax, paraffin wax, uh, melted onto the paper. Now you'll see me do all of this. I'm not going to have you watch me do the entire outline. That would be really boring. What I may do is I'll do it and then I'll speed up the process so you can see, you know, how I've transferred it and all of that good stuff. Um, and then we use watercolors to start painting. And we've already got our wax melted at 180 degrees and I use a little small 
maybe eight by eight, six by six electric frying pan. And I turn it up to um, about a medium, which is about 180. You don't want it much hotter than that because it will start smoking and it can discolor. Um, so if it starts to smoke, turn it down just a little bit, but it has to be melted through your entire painting process. And then we use watercolor brushes to paint the watercolor on the paper, on the rice paper. When we apply the wax, we're going to use a cheap set of whatever kind of brushes you want to use, different sizes, so that we can wax the area and we want to keep those brushes away from our watercolor stuff because if we have the two combined and we use the wax for the or the watercolor brush for the wax, it will ruin your brushes. I've done it. So when I'm only using watercolor, I put the lid on the pan. When I'm using, when I'm only doing waxing, I set my watercolor brushes way away from me so that I don't accidentally use my watercolor brushes in the wax. Because I've done it. It's not good. You will never get that wax out of your brushes. Now, the brushes that we use for the wax, you don't need to worry about getting the wax out of those. If they dry between using, that's okay. If they get a little bit stiff, just put them in the melted wax and they will get soft and you'll be able to use them for as long as you can use them. Um, I've had one set that I've been using now for about six months, and they're fine. You know, they the, the wax goes dry, and I have to melt it again, but that's okay. Anyway, so that's kind of the basics of this. So I'm going to stop this for now, and I will start uh, get everything ready, and then I will start doing my recording of everything and explain it to you. You won't see me during that time and I'll probably look, you know, my normal self. I did get cleaned up for you so that I wouldn't scare you away. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Thanks so much for watching me. Please give me a thumbs up. I can't wait to get started. See ya. All right. So this is my picture enlarged, and it is picture is ten and a half by sixteen and a quarter. So I'll adjust the um, when I put it on the rice paper. I'll adjust the edges out so that it's twelve inches wide by. 16 long. So that's not a problem. This is the tracing paper. So you can see I've traced a lot of this out already. These are my darkest dark areas in here. This is the actual photo that I'm doing. Um, but I've got another flower down here in this bottom right hand corner. So I wanted to change it up a little bit to fill the space a little better. I've just used my pencil to trace the picture. Then I've made marks on here. I've uh, put peas for the petals. And then this is the um, background. This is background. And then leaves are, have an L on them. This is my map that I'm going to go from. So I'll have, you know, the the edges here and the flowers that give them the little ripples and shadowing in here, um, light shadowing, and just any information that I'm going to need to paint it, I will do in here. So that's the basics of it right now. Um, I'm going to add some gold leaf in these areas where it's the lightest part or the brightest part 
of the center of the flower. I just thought that might add a little bit more excitement to this. And I will do the gold leaf at the very end. So that will be the first thing that I cover with wax, or just my little indications in here of where I'm going to be putting the gold leaf because I want to preserve that area for specifically the gold leaf. And I will do that at the very, very end of the painting itself. And when, and when we do this, um, we actually are going to paint an area all of the same color that the flower itself is going to be. Then we will wax the lightest part of the flower all the way around this. So, depending on what colors I decide, and I'll take you through that process as well, depending on the colors I use and the areas they go in, if I can do all that color at once, and then wax that color to preserve that color and area, that will make it more interesting. And then, on my darker areas here where the leaves have got It's kind of hard to explain, but see these areas in here, <coughs> I don't know whether you call it striations or exactly what you call it, but it gives you the, the feel that the leaf has um, raising and lowering of the leaf, ripples in the leaf, whatever that is. So I will not wax those areas because those are darker and they're on each side of the flower. So I will not wax those areas. When I get down to the lighter orange in the flower, I will wax part of it, but where the flower actually starts having, where the flower starts having um, deeper sections in it where it starts attaching to the flower and, and kind of bends up and forms a shadow in there, so darker orange, then I won't wax that area. I will wax the lighter area. Um, I will do the same thing with uh, the light areas of the green. When I get ready to paint the light areas of the green, I will do the light areas and where you can see the ripples in the petals and everything, I will do those darker so I won't wax those yet. And then <clears throat> you're building up the wax as you go. So which, with everything that you paint and with each layer that becomes darker, you're going to preserve the lightest area and you're going to keep building up. Once you've painted the entire painting, we will put an entire layer of wax over everything. That's after we've got all of the different layers on here and we're ready to start adding more texture to the flower. Then we add that layer of wax over here. Once that layer of wax is added to that, then we'll take the darkest color in your painting, or you can use a Payne's Gray, or you could use a gold, or some other color different than what is in this main area. You're going to <clears throat> mix up a juicy puddle of that, and then you're going to splash that over the wax. Let me back up a minute. Once we have the of the painting finished and then we're going to wax it entirely. Then we're going to let that set up and become hard. Once that is completely hard, then we're going to start the next phase of this, which is crunching this uh, rice paper up. We're going to wrinkle it carefully. We don't want it in a really tight ball 
because if it's in a tight ball, um, the wax will have large pieces that come off. And we want small, small areas, small cracks in that. So I'm going to lightly crack those areas. I may do certain areas first to make sure that I've got cracks in there. Once I've accomplished that, and I know that sounds crazy at this point, so you'll, you'll see that. But once I've got that done, <clears throat> then I'm going to smooth it out very carefully, and then I'm going to go to the puddle of color that I've mixed up, whatever color you decide, on your painting. And then I'm going to splash that on the wax that is already applied. Now, while that's wet, I'm going to put another layer of wax all over this. That pushes the wet paint down into those cracks and crevices and, and areas to give you more texture and interest in the painting. Then at the very last, once I've done that, and that wax has dried again and become hard, then we remove the wax and we do that by using newsprint paper or if you collect newspapers then you use newspapers and you stack the newspapers underneath the painting and on top of the painting, a few layers under and a few layers on top. Then we take an iron that you don't use for anything else but waxing and we start melting that wax off by ironing that. The newsprint paper or the newspaper will then absorb the wax and become wet. As it becomes pretty wet, then we'll remove those wet layers and use either top, both top and bottom. We use the iron again on clean dry paper and we continue doing that until you don't lift any more wax from your painting. Then the painting is completed. Now you can see I outline a little bit better. So then when I put the rice paper over that, everything's dark enough. Put that rice paper over there, then you can see what you've done beneath that. See, if you, to me, now you may find this differently. To me, it's easier to trace to do this work than to try and get all of the idiosyncrasies from the flower onto this. You can do it later if you so desire, but to me, I would rather put in this part of the work go in front of this smaller picture with that with this underneath this and tracing over it to do this to me it makes more sense to somebody else it might make more sense to do it just over the photo itself yeah I think maybe it depends on the type of photo you have there for this one you can see there's so much yellow and you can't get the individual leaves or petals in there as well as you can by doing this and then putting the rice paper over this. Now if you've got a still life and there aren't, but there's not so much busyness going on in there, you might be able to do it differently. Or you can do, in batik, you can do, just like with watercolor pouring, you can do any type of painting you so desire. The method is always the same. The work itself will be different depending on what 
type of batik you're doing, whether it's a, a cityscape or a landscape or a architectural drawing or florals or oceanscape or trees or whatever, then, you know, of course it's going to be different. I am actually working on this photo as well um, because my husband loves this photograph. So I've already started drawing it out and tracing it onto the tracing paper. Um, of course, I'm not really tracing it, I'm drawing it and because I won't have all of the, I'll have the brushwork, uh, the scrub brush in here and the leaves, the foliage and everything. I, I'm not going to depict every leaf or anything. I may, some of the closer up ones, I may actually draw those in so that they're, they're more recognizable. But for the most part, it's all going to be based on these trees in here and the colors in there. So anyway, that's, that's also what I'm working on. And so I'll get back to this and drawing this, but I wanted to take a little time out to explain this a little bit further to you.
that's it for today for this video and the next video will really get into depth and I'll be explaining everything that I'm doing as I'm painting and I can't wait thank you for watching and if you didn't watch all of this video you can zip through it really fast I'm going to speed up most of it except where I'm talking See you later. Give me a thumbs up, please. Bye.